Ghost, Chapter 6, World Record for the Longest Run After the Most Runaways in a Single Day. I ran non-stop to my next stop, which was the track, but not because I was bugging about being trapped in the stock room, that stock room, and trust me, I wasn't bugging, but also because that creepy clock reminded me that I was also late for practice. I ran through the streets until I finally made it to the park, where everyone was already warming up. So nice of you to finally join us, Mr. Cranshaw. Coach said as I threw my bag down. I wanted to tell him that I'd basically been trapped in the teleportation thingy that zapped me back to the scariest moment of my life, but I didn't because I knew no one would believe me. So I just sat down on the bench, kicked my half shoes off, thankfully. Everybody else was focused on stretching and not my feet and rolling my pant legs up. Sorry, sorry, I said, unzipping my bag, but Coach had already turned his attention back to the other runners. I looked to my left and right, then over my shoulder, and quickly scanned the other side of the track to make sure there were no extra guests dressed in undersized navy blue uniforms with badges and handcuffs checking out practice. Once I knew the place was clear of cops, I pulled the silver shoes out and slipped them on my feet, lacing them up tight. Then I threw the beat-up sneakers in the bag and hit the track. So today's Thursday, Coach said, as I sat down to join in, the, in on the much, much-needed stretching. After spending the day with fire in my legs, stretching made so much more sense now. It took maybe two seconds for Patty to notice my shoes. She smiled and slapped Sonny on the arm to get his attention. Then he saw them and gave me a thumbs up. So corny. I looked over at Lou. He was staring at them and fixed his mouth in the way that people do when they're thinking, not bad. And then, and that was good enough for me. Coach continued. And Mikey, tell him, uh, now Coach caught a glimpse of the diamonds on my feet and got stuck. He looked both surprised and confused. It was the same expression he had when I told him to call me Ghost. Um, he caught himself and continued, Mikey, tell the newbies what we do on Thursdays. Mikey said in his usual grunty way, long run. That's right, long run, Coach said. This is about conditioning, not speed, and everybody has to do it. Let me tell you, when he said long run, there were a few things I hadn't thought about. The first was that I hadn't had lunch because of the whole running out of school thing, and I was starving and wouldn't be able to eat until after practice. And the second was just how much I needed food to give me energy, because what Coach meant by a long run was a million miles, especially since I'd just run about a million miles, from the school to the store and the store to the track. Then the crazy thought hit me. He was punishing me for stealing, even though he didn't know. Or did he? Nah, he didn't. He couldn't. He didn't. This was just a coincidence, a bad, bad coincidence. Coach didn't tell us how far I'd be running, or anything. All he said was follow with. Where are you going? I asked as coach started walking toward his car, but he didn't say nothing back. That's when Aaron told me what was going on. He's getting in the chase car, or as he calls it, the motivation mobile, Aaron said, patting me on the shoulder. You'll see. He ran in place for a few seconds. I copied him and did a few high kicks. I felt like a gump doing it, but all that went away out the window when Aaron said, nice shoes, man. I was going to tell him that I called them the silver bullets, but decided that probably it would have been too much. Plus. There's no more talk, more time for talk. Coach was honking his horn, which I guess was the signal for the run to begin. Coach Witt took off, and we all ran behind her, off the track and onto the sidewalk, as if we were some kind of running mob of obstacle course contestants, dodging people and car doors, ducking under store awnings, and jumping over random bicycles. The pace wasn't anything too crazy, a little more than a jog, but definitely nowhere close to a sprint. And honestly, I was surprised at how I kept up for at least 10 minutes before starting to drop back. Had to be the shoes. Sonny was up front with some of the other distance runners like Lynn, Brat Brat, whose real name was Brittany, and JJ. Patty was in the middle, keeping pace with Deja and Crystal Speed. She seemed to be doing okay too. In the back were the sprinters, which made sense. The new shoes were definitely helping me out, but there was only so much they could do. At about 25 minutes, which was longer than I'd ever run, I eventually fell behind the other sprinters, putting me in last place. And that's when I learned what the motivation mobile was. First, it was just a honk, a short toot. I turned around, and there was Coach in his cab, his emergency blinkers on. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. He was trailing us. Then came the long honk, then the megaphone. Coach rolled his window down and started screaming at us. Well, really, just me. Threw it. Pick it up, ghost, pick it up, he screamed, uh, screeched his, his voice loud and crackly. I won't lie. Knowing that he was on my heels like that, watching every step I took definitively put on the pressure, definitely put on the pressure. 
made me feel like I was being chased, which is always the easiest way to keep running. I knew that. A couple hours ago, I had been running from the invisible cops, and there was the time I got chased by a dog hanging out of the basketball court, hoping somebody would pick me to run. This older dude that everybody calls Sicko was there playing. He was one of those dudes with a crazy eye who never goes anywhere, nowhere without his dog. He had the fattest, the fat head mutt tied to the leg of one of the benches, and went. I went to pet it. Stupid, I know. I got, I got to barking all crazy, jumping at me, snapping his mouth. I backed away, but it kept lunging until finally the leash popped. It just popped. That dog chased me around the court and off the court, and I didn't stop running until I got home. That might have been the fastest I'd ever run. Well, the second fastest. Anyway, I won't lie. I never caught up to everybody else, even with Coach pretty much yelling at me through the stupid megaphone the whole time. He was leaning on the horn like a crazy person, everybody in the street looking at me, some totally confused and some actually cheering me on. I didn't even come close to finishing with everybody else, but I didn't quit. I never stopped running. As everybody except for Sonny lay down on the track, trying to catch their breath, Coach had this cocky grin on his face as he came from his car, like he knew he worked us to death. Coach Witt, who shined today, he asked, jingling his keys. Coach Witt stood with her hands on her head, her face in the parts between her braids glistening with sweat. I gotta give it to Sonny, Coach. The kid stuck with me the whole time. Sonny lit up. He wasn't even tired. Like running 800 miles or however many we ran was no big deal to him. And I'm sure almost everybody else felt like, I don't know, like we had be had become slime. Good job, Sonny, Coach said, giving him a high five. I told you vets to look out for him, didn't I? Mikey and Darren and Britt Brett and JJ, and pretty much all the other vets groaned. But I could tell they were impressed by the lanky leg, Sonny. Patty jumped up and gave him a high five as well. Yo, you like an alien, she said. Yeah, man, you got legs, Lee followed. Then he turned around to me. You too, ghost. Them new shoes ain't give you no new speed, but you ain't quit. So yeah, thanks, I said, you too. I didn't know why I said you too. It's just like a reflex. It didn't even really make sense in this case, but that's what came out. Okay, okay, coach said. Y'all can hang, hug, and all that tomorrow at the newbie dinner. What's that, Patty asked. It's, it's tradition. Every year I take the newbies out for Chinese food on the first Friday of the season. It's like a bonding thing, coach explained. And then looking from me to Lou to Pat, to Patty to Sonny, one by one, he added, what, y'all don't like Chinese food? Of course, we quickly answered. No, nah, Chinese is good, definitely. Sounds good to me. I'm cool with it. Coach, with a key ring now on his middle finger, spun the keys like cowboys do with their guns in the old movies. Mr. Charles was always watching. Okay, then, Coach said. Now give me two cool-down laps and get off my track. At home, me and Ma had our, my favorite for dinner, Salisbury steak. Every time she brought it home, all I could think about was how lucky the people in the hospital were that they could get dinner, get that for dinner. Salisbury steak is amazing. I don't know what exactly Salisbury is, but whatever it is, it's delicious. So you like me track, Ma asked, feeding the food up. Yeah, it's cool. It's crazy hard, but it's cool. And what about the coach, she asked. How's he? I like him, I said, playing, unsure of what she was getting at. Like I said, moms never trust people around their kids. Never, ever. And Coach had just left uh, after asking my mom if I could go to newbie dinner. And she said I could, but the smell of Salisbury might have changed her mind just that quick. I don't know why it would, but who really understands moms? I know that what she said, popping open the microwave when it dinged. She flashed a smile at me. I like him too. Phew. The homework Ma was avoiding tonight was all about how to draw blood. They call it phlebotomy. And the movie of the night was Love Jones, which we've seen a bazillion times, but Mom loves it. It's about this photographer lady and this dude who writes poems, and they like each other. Then they hate each other. Then they love each other, and then it's over, or something like that. I never really pay much attention. I just flip through my world record book and spout out different facts. You know, there's this dude named Tommy, um, Tommy something. I couldn't pronounce his last name. He holds the world record for pulling the most nails out of a piece of wood with his teeth. My mother, sitting with the nursing textbook open on her lap, just shushed me and kept on watching. And then there's this other guy, he continued, even though I know she didn't want to hear it. Most of the time, I just like to mess with her. His name's Wim Hof. What a name, right? Yikes, Wim Hof. Anyway, he got the record for the most amount of time spent in ice. In ice, my mother asked? Must have caught her at a boring part of the movie. Yeah, in it. One hour and 53 minutes. People crazy, she said, shaking her head. Then she held her hand out in front of me to let me know the boring part of the movie was now over. 
It was time for her to resume, fanning the tears back every five minutes. Blah, blah, blah. Hey, you ever heard of Usain Bolt? I asked her. He holds the record for being the fastest man. Cass, come on now, she begged. They're getting ready to fall in love again. You know that's my favorite part. I just shook my head and kept on flipping. The good thing was she didn't ask me about my fancy shoes. But that's just because she didn't know about them. I changed them in Coach's cab on the way from practice. Coach, on the other hand, definitely asked about them. Where'd you get them? That's all I want to know, Coach said. This came after he told me that he was proud of me for not quitting. I told him that I had no idea why he loved to torture children so much. Did you grow all the kids on the team like this, or just me? I replied. Snap. Just you. He slapped my arm. I told him my mother had gotten for me as a way to encourage me to do the right thing and stay out of trouble. Just saying it turned my stomach, because here I was, a boy who was suspended for busting somebody in the face at school one day, and skipped half a day to school the next, because I was laughed at. Then I swiped shoes. I clearly wasn't staying out of trouble. Matter of fact, I was knee-deep in it. Oh, okay, Coach said, but I could tell he didn't believe me. I wouldn't have. He could probably see it on my face, especially since, just like him, I didn't have no hair on it to disguise it either. And honestly, yes, honestly, I couldn't even believe I'd just lied like that. It wasn't, I wasn't really the lying type, but I also wasn't the stealing type until a few hours earlier. Altercations, altercations, altercations.